All right, you know what time it is. It's another Q&A session. Entrepreneurship, social media marketing agency, personal development, personal life, and a bunch of other really, really juicy topics. So I've gone ahead and picked the best questions that I've got asked on IG. If you're not following me on IG, I'm posting a lot of behind the scenes content there. Uh, but I digress. We're going to get in, uh, right into it. There's eight questions. Eight, eight questions uh, that I'm going to be going through. And yeah, you want to stick around to the end because I'll probably leave the, the juices one till the end. Um, so let's get right into it. How are you getting clients uh, trust with only 26 posts on your Mogul C IG page? So first of all, first, Mogul C uh, was the name of my previous agency. We've actually rebranded it uh, to Ecom. Thank you. Um, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, we've actually rebranded it so that uh, IG page is old. But even with Ecom, with a Q, uh, I, I'm not really planning on posting a lot of content for that uh, agency. And the reason why I wanted to add, uh, answer this, this uh, question is because, you know, how many posts you have on your um, agency IG page has absolutely nothing to do with the amount of clients that you sign and the success of your agency, all right? Uh, and so my clients don't buy from me or don't bring me on because of how many posts I've got on my IG page. They bring me on because I'm competent, okay? I've got a specific process to results in a wide range of, of different sub niches within the e space. I've been through the trenches and oftentimes at this point in the journey, I get a bunch of referrals uh, coming my way. And so even from the very start, clients never judge me on how many posts I had on my IG page. And oftentimes I would tell them, look, you know, we were not really the biggest, um, we don't really have the biggest presence on, on social media. And the reason why that is is because we understand that the part that we sell, right? And so uh, just like a uh, drug dealer doesn't, you know, uh, get high on, on their own supply, we don't get high on social media. We use social media to, uh, you know, generate incredible results for our students. Carlos. That's my, uh, my uh, CTO. Uh, he likes whistling uh, along. But we use social media to generate uh, a lot of money for, for our clients. But you know, we don't use social media. Um, we use social media, but we don't even let that social media use us, right? And so um, that's how I would approach that question if you're ever um, questioned by a client, oh, you know, you're doing social media marketing or digital marketing or Facebook ads, but you don't really have a social media person. I'm not selling you social media management. And even if I were selling social media management, that has nothing to do with the quality and, uh, of my services and the results I'm able to uh, provide, right? And so, yeah. Which industries do you see opportunities uh, for SMA in 2022? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by industries. I'm not sure if you mean like the niches within e -com, but I mean, if you don't mean that, uh, I mean, the, the industries is e-commerce, right? That, that's what you should be tapping into. And within the e-commerce umbrella, you should be picking a specific sub niche, right? So whether it's apparel and fashion, whether it's cosmetics, whether it's NFTs, right? NFT agencies, um, you know, I've got, I've got students doing NFT agencies crushing it. Um, so yeah, those those are in that, that's really the one industry that you should be focused on, which is anyone that's selling something online. And there's a bunch of different um, uh, spaces that you can go into. Uh, you can go into the creator economy as well, right? You can go into the education space, the online education space. You can go into so many different spaces, but the whole industry in of itself is e-commerce, right? Selling stuff online. Um, what grades did you get in high school? Good question. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've 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 always been a good student, and I have nothing. You know, I'm never gonna preach like, oh, you know, I was a C or D student and, you know, school uh, failed me and all that stuff. I did have a hatred towards university. Um, but, you know, the way I've always been is I've always been motivated and I've always, I never settled for mediocrity. I was never brought up um, with the idea of entrepreneurship in mind. My parents are pretty traditional, I, I love them, but they, they, they were raised in a pretty traditional way. You know, you know get a good job, you know, bring up uh, a good family, um, have kids and, you know, live a happy life, right? So, so I was brought up into that idea of the world. And so I never considered entrepreneurship when I was uh, younger. I was never the kid that was selling lemonade on, on the street or like selling candy, right, at school. Um, so, however, I've, I've always been super motivated and I've always been, I've never settled for mediocrity, right? And so I just, I, I just applied that drive into what I knew, right, which was school. And so um, I crushed it, <laughs> I crushed it on school. Uh, you know, I, I was probably mostly A student, yeah, uh, mostly A student. Obviously, I've had a bunch of Bs and a bunch of Cs. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've ever gotten a D, to be honest with you. But yeah, I just took that drive and applied it to school. Then I realized just how big of a lie um, the traditional system was. And I was like, yeah, this is not really going to serve me well. So let me put my drive elsewhere. And I, I put it into, into something else, um, which was entrepreneurship, building businesses. 
and uh, yeah, that, that's kind of it. How many hours do you work in your agency and how do you do that? Um, I don't work more than two hours a day, to be honest with you. Um, I don't work more than two hours a day. Uh, a day. Uh, and how do I do that? By building a really good team and delegating much of the day-to-day -day activities like communication, reporting, and service delivery, and um, building really cool uh, asymmetric return systems where I can put little input, um, manage the system, and get quite a bit of output. Like, for example, my automated sales funnel that books me just predictably. Like, for example, my organic profile funnel that builds my authority, uh, nurtures conversations, nurtures people, and gets me uh, meetings booked uh, for the agency. So that's that. How big is your team of people working for you at the moment? It depends on the business, right? Um, I'm guessing maybe it's, it's about the agency. So we've got two media buyers. One of those media buyers is primarily focused on um, my own e-com brands and the other one is primarily focused on our own e-com clients. Then we've got my CTO, who was the guy whistling uh, before. Um, uh, so we've got my CTO, myself, and then we've got my head of operations, uh, which kind of oversees the day to day. So pretty lean team, uh, to be honest with you. Um, the CTO, a lot of people ask me like, what, what he does and all that stuff. He's actually my brother, all right? And so that's the first thing. I, I always wanted to, to do something with my brother um, and getting him involved in, in my business and you know building cool shit together as well, new businesses. It's, it's just a, a dream come true. Um, so yeah, what, what does he do? He primarily focuses on, on the tech side of things. So you know, we build our own in-house uh, land pages. Uh, we build our own uh, uh, softwares uh, oftentimes. Uh, and so yeah, that's, that's kind of what he does. We need a meetup in Madrid. Yes, we do. We do need a meetup in Madrid. Um, I'm probably going to do one. You know, I've, I've done meetups in, in uh, London. I did a massive meetup uh, there. It was, it was kind of like an event. I wanted to do one in Paris uh, and I got quite a lot of interest for it uh, when I posted the, the story, but I was just, I was just like, let me, let me actually catch a break. Uh, I'm here on, on vacation, um, well, on work vacation. And um, in the end, I, I just, you know, I just didn't do it. Um, so I'll probably do one in Paris, I'll probably do one in Madrid. Uh, those are the upcoming uh, cities. Uh, but I, I love meetups. Um, I mean, I only did one, but you know, the time I did it in London, it was it was a great time. What's your IQ? Uh, I have no idea, and I've literally got zero interest in, in knowing. Um, I don't care if it's low, I don't care if it's high, I, I really don't care. Uh, I, I, I don't see the value of knowing these things. Because if it's high, then it can make you a little bit complacent and it, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't know if, if it was high, right? I don't know if, if I would want to know because then I'd be like, has this been nurture or nature? You know, like have I, uh, how, was I just born with, you know, different intelligence level? Uh, and I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'm not saying I am a dumb person, right? But yeah, I, I don't know if, if I would want to know. Uh, and then if it's low, I think uh, a lot of people are limited by that. You know, oh, it, it's a great excuse, right? And as humans were, oh, you know, most humans are constantly looking for excuses as to why they, they can't do it, as to why they cannot have the success that other people are having, right? And so if you know that you have a low IQ, it's kind of limiting, right? Um, so I don't know, I've, I've never seen the point in knowing your IQ and all this shit. Um, I, I just do the work and I set my, my, my mind to something and I just work towards it. Um, I don't care if, if uh, you know, I don't need to know my IQ to know that I can do stuff, right? Uh, so I'd rather not know it. Um, is that SMA still worth it on 2022? I, I feel like that question deserves a, a whole video in and of itself. I'll probably do one on my main channel, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's never been bigger, right? It, it only is getting bigger. Uh, you just have to understand what spaces to tap into, right? And it, it's like any business model, right? You just have to adapt. And I think the people that adapt and understand that the e-com space is only growing, it's growing exponentially. It's grown more in the past six months than in the past 10 years. And when you understand that, right, and you understand how how few people are actually doing e-com agency and are doing it well in a specific sub-niche, building authority in a, spe you know, in a specific segment within that 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 whole massive industry, right? Um, then you realize just how much opportunity there is, right? If you compare the amount of eco brands um, that are out there in the market and that are, that are uh, getting built and getting started every single day. If you compare that to the number of uh, eco agencies in the world, right? <laughs> it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's laughable, right? I mean, like just look at the, the amount of people watching this video um, and watching SME videos. Like it's just a bunch of like a bunch of nerds, you know, hundreds of nerds watching videos on like eco agency and digital marketing. You know, I love this community um, and I love what we've got going on, but like. You know, we're definitely a very, very small minority. Um, so definitely worth it. And uh, yeah, that is that for this video. If you've enjoyed it, drop a massive thumbs up. 
And if you haven't joined my free private Facebook mastermind, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, we're going live in there pretty much every single day. Me and the team are, are dropping massive value bombs um, on building social media marketing agency, on building an e-com agency, on the best proven digital marketing strategies and e-com growth hacks um, that I'm not posting anywhere else. So if you want to go ahead and join that exclusive community, there's going to be a link in the description. You're going to have to go ahead and fill in an application. Right now, we've got around 800 applications to, uh, to go through. So make sure that you put effort into those answers. Um, and if you're a good fit, we'll let you in. With that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.